This is Scott Linebrink with Get In The Game podcast, and this week I'm joined by Mr. Jim Tomey, one of my teammates. Jimmy, it's good to have you here, buddy. Liner, thank you. It's uh, it's great to connect, and it's been too long. You know, you, you, you play with guys, and then, you know, when you reconnect like this, it really, really brings back a lot of great memories, a lot of great times in the clubhouse, as, as you well know, and I've always had the utmost respect for you, number one, as a man, as a, you know, what you stand for. And then I've always admired, luckily, I don't think we faced each other a lot, but uh, it sure was, it sure was great getting that opportunity to play together and, and be your teammates. So thank you for having me. Man, that means a bunch. Uh, and you're right. I, I, uh, I don't think that you have any home runs off me, mostly because we were teammates for a few years. So <laughs> I, I'm glad I wasn't one of the, uh, the 612, but, uh, wow, what a career you had. And, uh, Thank you. yeah, it was an honor to be your teammate too. Um, I remember Paul Canerco telling me that one time he said, you know, I got a couple of highlights. Uh, one of course, winning the world series, getting to play in a city like Chicago and being Jim Tomey's teammate. Like he oh, singled that oh, out. That's I would, so, right. I'd agree. And Paul, you know, Paulie's right up there as well. We, we had a great group of guys there in Chicago and, you know, we had a, we had a real talented team and it was the great thing of all of our journeys as players is we get to connect and then become, well, remain brothers really our whole life. That's the best being around the game right now, as I am, I see it, you know, I see guys forming this brotherhood, this fraternity, and, you know, being blessed to play a long time, over 20 years, you know, you meet some great men and getting that, just, you know, when you get a chance like this to reconnect, it's really special for sure. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned over 20 years. So I was doing a little research here on you because I wanted yep. to give folks some stats. And I don't know who wouldn't know Jim Tomey that's uh, any kind of baseball fan, but 22 years in the major leagues. And I'm thinking when I read that, what does your baseball card look like on the back? Like, can you even <laughs> read those numbers? with 22 lines? Oh, uh, I, 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 to be honest, I never, I mean, I haven't looked at them. I'm, I'm going to check it out actually. Uh, but they always say, you know, the running joke around baseball is always look on the back of the baseball card. You know, whether you're a pitcher, an offensive, be a hitter, a reliever, and pretty much that guy will be around his numbers, you know, give or take whether he battled an injury. Uh, but we kind of are who we are. You know, if you're a high strikeout guy as a as a hitter, if you were a high average guy, let's say like a Tony Gwynn, pretty much if you look on that baseball card, you're going to have the numbers are going to be pretty close uh, up and down, you know, along the uh, the back of it. But I've, I'm going to do that line. I'm going to check out the back because I, I really have now. I'll, I'll look when I sign the card. It's always on the front, but that's that's pretty cool. I'll have to check that out. Well, yeah, now that you're the big 5-0, you might have to put on those reading glasses to read all those tiny, teeny oh, tiny numbers. Boy, I'm getting there. That's <laughs> for sure. You know, when, I, when I'm sitting in a meeting in, uh, in spring training here and I look down at the sheet, I'm like, man, I'm going to have to get some readers here soon because it's changing <laughs> quickly. I know, I know. Well, I can imagine that those guys there with the White Sox, um, you know, just uh, hopefully they're taking advantage of having a guy like you that can speak into uh, areas of the game, the things that you've learned, the things that, that you were most successful in. Uh, but what a what a wealth of information. Um, and I hope to dig into a little bit of that, just, you know, peel back the layers yeah. and and hear about what was behind the psyche, your approach to the game. Uh, but really what I want to get into, right. and we'll talk about it later, is, is uh, your service. Uh, that's yeah. that's kind of the, the, the theme of this podcast is get in the game. So talking about living a life of service, what it means to serve others, why is it better to do things for others than to receive, um, all of those great lessons that, that we hope that we're, uh, we're sharing and, and passing along to others and, and hopefully making the world a better place. So, yeah, but, but first I want to, I want to just chat a little bit here because, uh, you're, you're one of the nice guys, uh, perhaps one of the nicest guys that I've met. And, uh, and again, we talked about uh, how much we respected each other and being each other's teammate. 
um, the thing I can always remember about you is no matter what you were doing in the clubhouse, and usually you had a bat in your hand and you were all dressed, <laughs> you know, nails on, ready to go. Um, but you know, you were, you were busy going somewhere, you were doing something, you were never just lounging around, but no matter what, you always took time to stop and say hi and not just say hi, like in passing, but you took a genuine interest in me and you took a genuine interest in your teammates. Um, just talk about that a little bit. Well, I, I, I think it's so important and it was important and thank you for that compliment, but I think you learn that through great teammates, right? Like, you know, we were both, I think, fortunate and blessed to come up around great men, great baseball men. I know me personally, you know, growing up in the Cleveland organization, I had some great mentors, uh, you know, Eddie Murray, you know, from Oral Hershiser to my first roommate was Sandy Alomar. You know, we had, I had Charlie Manuel around us in, in Cleveland there. And, you know, I think, I think the most important part of being a good teammate is to get to know each other and, and to take that time, stop, you know, cause at the end of the day, yes, we're baseball players. We, we play this incredible game, but we're all, you know, we're all men. We're all you know, we all have lives, we have kids, we have our hobby interests, you know, whether it was hunting, fishing, golf. And it, it, it look, look, I, the, the best part of it, it, it with that group of our White Sox team was they, we all were good guys and we cared about each other and genuinely wanted each other to do well. When, when your boys did well, and you can come in after the game and celebrate and have fun with those guys. There's nothing better. And to be honest, Liner, that, that kept on when I was in Cleveland and went to Chicago, then went to Philadelphia, Minnesota, played with a great group of guys with the twins. And, you know, it's, it's that brotherhood and fraternity. And I've used that name. I don't, I don't want to overuse that, but it truly is something special our brotherhood and the fraternity of baseball of our baseball family that we uh, that we appreciate yeah you know you you talk about that rooting for each other uh you know i love that saying that says you know when the when the water in the harbor comes up all the ships rise and that's really what it's like in a in a clubhouse i mean it's a it's a tough job as each one of us goes out there and does a different task but knowing that we got 24 other guys behind us rooting for us, we got a manager that, that wants us to succeed. That makes a huge difference in terms of our psyche and, and our approach as we go out there. It, it, it does. It absolutely does. And, you know, knowing that we're all on the same rope trying to, you know, pull for each other and, you know, and it's a long year. I'm, I'm in spring training right now out here in Arizona and watching the White Sox prepare for a long season. It starts, you know, it starts in February and hopefully it ends in October. And if we're blessed and fortunate to, to, to continue that journey into the postseason, you know, that's what's special because you start so early, but yet, you know, that long journey is just something that you've got to mentally prepare, excuse me, pre prepare for and get ready for. Amen. Yeah. So it was a long journey. Uh, every season was a long journey. Your whole career was a long journey and it ended in the hall of fame. And it was so cool to sit there and watch you along with Trevor Hoffman, another teammate of mine and Chipper Jones, another teammate, um, you know, three great guys, well accomplished. Uh, what was that like for you? That experience of sitting up there, looking down at that lawn, being around uh -huh. just all of those guys. It was absolutely, I mean, it's surreal. It was, it was, a, it's, it's a, a three day, just incredible weekend by, from the moment, well, from the time you get the call and then the preparation to the induction and, and what it does for your family, that how it brings you together and the joy and the happiness you know, when I was on stage liner, 
you know, my family was out in front of us there and to see the joy on their face. And then you see the Cleveland fans, you see the Braves fans, you see the Padre fans genuinely supporting their guys, their people that they, you know, our, our group of fans that truly enjoyed watching all those great guys play to be a part of that is just so special and it's surreal. It was, it was a three day, just incredible ride that I will never forget. And to watch the family have so much fun and enjoy it was, uh, was something I'll never forget. I can imagine how special that must've been knowing the family guy that you are, um, you know, getting to, to hang out with Andrea, your kids. Um, I know my dad always loved hanging out with your dad. Uh, when he would come up to Chicago, love Chuck, love just hearing about how proud he was of you. And I know, um, you know, your, your dad's no longer with us, but, um, man, he's, he's still proud of you. And I know, uh, that, that, uh, had a big influence in your life. He did. So, so I was fortunate, right? I, I, my dad got an opportunity to see me in my debut and dad was alive all the way to till the day that I was blessed to go into the hall of fame dad got to screw my plaque into the wall in the hall of fame and it meant so much and then he passed away a year and a half later uh which was you know which was hard for our family but but having that opportunity to go and enjoy that with dad and having him be a part of it and, and along with Andrea and her father and my brothers and sisters, the liner, the joy and the smiles on their faces. I, I mean, from, from my end, sitting back and watching it was just made it so much. It made it so special. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I had some neat father son moments with my dad too and listening to you talk about that moment with your dad and him him screwing that plaque on uh at the hall of fame that must have been unbelievable i think back to my dad was a grew up a yankees fan and matter of fact when the white Sox were were there in uh in new york dad i invited him to come down on the field and we went out to monument park together and his favorite player was mickey mantle and uh, me and him standing in front of Mickey Mantle's bust and taking a picture out there. I mean, dad was just beside himself. He couldn't hardly hold it together, but what a special moment. And, uh, and so, so neat to be able to enjoy, enjoy that with our dads. And I know you've had a lot of neat, neat father son moments with your son too. So, so two cool moments when, when I was fortunate to hit number 500, dad and I delivered the 500 ball to the hall of fame. Wow. We had lunch at the Otisaga Hotel overlooking the beautiful lake. And, and I'll never forget that moment, that, that special moment him and I got to do that with. Now, it was what, maybe five years or I, I, I'm not sure exactly how many it was until I hit 600. So hitting 600, then my son got to walk the, or excuse me, got to walk the ball out at the uh, the classic game and deliver the 600 ball to the to the Hall of Fame. So two special moments. Obviously blessed to be able to hit 500, then 600, but then to share it with your dad and your son, and to have that moment was just was just something I'll never forget. It, it you know to this day liner i really stop and i think did this really all happen as mm. as you know as an as a player as an ex player it goes by so quick mm. and you know reflecting back along that that long journey but that quick journey in life it it it's just to this day i think man did this really all happen and it's it's something that is just you feel blessed and, and appreciative of. Amen. Yeah, that's so cool. Well, uh, they say that, that the, often it's a true measure of a person by uh, how they make you feel. And you made a lot of people, you elevated a lot of people around you. You were a leader. Uh, you were somebody that I felt like, you know, even though you're this guy's a Hall of Famer, this guy's done things that only a handful of people in the game have done. 
you were approachable and you were able to uh, answer questions. Um, you know, I was looking at some of the comments that people had about you and all of them complimentary, but you know, one thing that came out loud and clear was that you are a, a pros pro, a professional in every sense of the word. Um, and that came from Charlie Manuel. One, another uh, cool quote that I dug up from Chipper, who you got <laughs> inducted with, he said whenever he played against you, he used to try and hit singles so that he could stop at first and talk to you. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. That's a that's that's the benefit of playing first base, you know. And <laughs> and, and I've got to tell you, it's funny you say that because you know I, I work with Sean Casey at the network, and everybody says the same thing about Sean Casey. Like, man, I just wanted to get on first base just to just to be able to chat and have a good time. And, you know, it wasn't that it wasn't that you weren't focused in the game, but when a base runner gets, gets on base, it, it, it's kind of this five to 10 second pause that you have during the game to get to know guys, or you see a buddy, an ex teammate or whatever it's, it was, it was always cool being a first baseman and getting to share maybe a few little stories here and there with, with guys that you loved either as a teammate or loved just watching them play just as long as they didn't do well against you that day. That was That's the right. Thing. Yeah. So you, you may or may not remember this. I remember it well uh, because, of course, you were a guy I looked up to. This was before we were teammates. I was playing with Houston. You were with Philadelphia. And I yeah. just happened to be a, a starting pitcher at the time, so I got the hit, you know, and that was always a big highlight for me. <laughs> So we're playing down there in Houston, and I, I mean, I got into one. I, I hit it on the screws. I thought this thing might have a chance, but I hit it to the deepest part of the yard right there in front of the hill. The center fielder goes back, and he, he catches the ball on the warning track, and I'm rounding first base, and as I come back, I pass by you, and I looked at you, and I said, man, that's all I got. And you just died laughing. <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's great. Yeah, but you're right. It's it's neat to to have interactions like that and have fun out there on the field. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a game. It's very serious, but but we do have a lot of fun and and it's those relationships that make it special. It sure is. It's yeah. as I said earlier, it just man, time flies in general. You know, it's it, but but looking back and 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 reflecting on those little moments, uh, a moment at first base, something in the dugout, you know, a locker conversation. It's I, that's what I miss. I miss I miss our dinners. I miss that Sunday night getting into you know a road city and you know four or five or six or seven eight guys going out to dinner and. Uh, that's your, your, the camaraderie of your teammates. You'll never, you miss it. You really do. You really right. miss it. You do. Yeah. Well, I want to switch gears a little bit and I want to yeah. walk away from the baseball field and, um, and talk about the, um, the platform that uh, you established that you use so well to benefit others. And of course, you know, this being a podcast about service, um, I want people to to look behind the uniform and see the guy that you were that truly cared about people, not just a guy that treated people well, uh, but that honestly did a lot in terms of uh, financial investments, in terms of time spent, and just uh, letting people know that you truly cared. Um, so I looked some of this stuff up, and, and granted, I got some of this off of Wikipedia, which I'm yeah. going to give a disclaimer because there's some things on, on Wikipedia that, that I would not um, agree with about me. I didn't know that anybody can go in there and change that information. And, uh, and I had a buddy do that for me, um, and, and did not put some, some very nice things on there. So, <laughs> so I, I'm going to say this and you tell me if it's wrong, but yeah, yeah. It, sa it says that you established funds to put 10 nieces and nephews through college. We did. Uh, yes, wow. we, we did. And, and that, that was well, and I'll credit my lovely, beautiful wife, Andrea, Good who man. is the most caring, most giving person, you know, that it's why I love her. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, what she does for our kids and for people in general. I mean, she, Andrea is an author and, you know, it, she's truly amazing. Just her, her, you know, her, her focus, her, you know, she's just somebody that I really look up to. 
And when you talk about, you know, all the charitable things that, you know, that we were a part of and, you know, it's not, it's not that there's a ton of them, but the ones that we were fortunate to, to be a part of and, you know, through the organizations of baseball as well, you know, which played a big part, uh, you know, you just, you feel, you feel grateful that, you know, that you had leaders around us helping us along the way, helping guide us, help direct us, you know, listening, you know, think about it. We were playing, you know, and then when you get done playing, you still have these wonderful people around you. And I, I've been very fortunate to have a, a friend, someone that I really admire in my wife that's, that, and you as well, Liner, you have a, a, an incredible wife that I know you would say this. Us. And, you know, we're fortunate to have our wives be that for us. But, uh, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been a great ride and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I have, I have her by my side you know, helping, helping with a lot of different things as well. Amen. Yeah. Uh, always good to give credit to the one who, who holds a house down, who maintains order and, and who makes us better men. Amen. Absolutely. So some of the other things that you've been involved in, um, your nephew had a spinal cord injury. And so you've been very involved in, um, uh, paralysis endeavors or, um, yep. scientific research for that. Yep. Um, yep. Involved. So Brandon, Brandon was yeah. 16 when he was injured. He was in a swimming pool accident. Uh, and, you know, he is talk about an inspiration, someone that, you know, like what he's gone through and, you know, and I know, I know he is really, you know, he's just, he's a, he's really a, been a, just a big inspiration for our family. And, uh, you know, we're hoping that, you know, through just time and maybe one day, you know, something will uh, will happen where he'll be able to uh, maybe walk again one day. But, you know, if he doesn't, I know, you know, he lives life to the fullest and he's just a, I admire him a lot just, you know, on just the man he is and how he uh, how he lives his life with a smile. Mm. You know, and that's, that's really, really been important, I think, for our family to follow just that in general and watching him every day and what he's gone through. And I know all of our family, my family in general, my side, and I know Andrea's as well, really, we care a lot about Brandon and really, really are hoping and praying, you know, that, you know, that there's still hope that maybe something one day could happen. You know, we'll see. Well, I know he's got to be encouraged by his uncle that's helping him out. Yeah. Um, you guys have also been uh, very active in community work in, in all of the cities that you played in, which you played in, what, six different cities? Yes, I believe, yes. Yes, so I that, think. That's yes. a full-time job in itself, if you're still active in all of those places. Um, but you, you've helped out folks near your hometown that were impacted by a major tornado several years ago. Yep. Yep, that um, was my brother's that was my brother's hometown. That tornado wow. hit Washington, Illinois. And uh, you know, I, I I actually went to visit that it was two days after the tornado hit. And boy, what a it, it, it liner, it was something that I mean I had never experienced watching and to see what that tornado did to that to my brother's hometown which was right outside of Peoria, which was ultimately, you know, which was ultimately my hometown as well. And uh, boy, it, it was just devastating. I mean, you know, to see what a tornado can do and the impact that it had, it took pretty much, I think, half of that little town and completely wiped it out. It was, uh, it was heartbreaking, you know, and I, again not me but that city that little town rallied peoria rallied around washington 
and the mayor there as well. I give him a lot of credit and, uh, and did a fabulous job at bringing everybody together and, and making and the watch it now to go through Washington and see how pretty and clean and rebuilt it is, is just, I, I, every time I go to my lodge, you know, I go through that area and I just smile every time I go through because it, it's truly, it, you know, if you'd have seen it the second day and then to see it now, it's, it's just, it's, it makes you smile. Well, you've done a lot for a lot of people. You put a lot of smiles on people's face. Uh, you've been recognized for it too. You're a two time Marvin Miller man of the year award winner. You've won the Lou Gehrig award as well as the prestigious Roberto Clemente award, um, which I know that you're very proud of. What, what do those mean to you? Well, again, I think they mean a lot, but they mean, you know, th this team that we have, you know, and I touched on this with Andrea, you know, I go back to when I worked for the, you know, when we were working with the children's hospital of Peoria and the people there, the, you know, the, the Stacy Kaler to my mom, when she was alive to Andrea, all to the, to the people around the Peoria area that used to go out and, you know, and get donations and, you know, and auction items. And we had a, an evening, you know, in January every year that, that was just so special and uh, something that we all looked forward to. But those awards are, it's not about the one man, it's about a group of people that were all a team and that came together to do wonderful, or to try to do wonderful things and give back to your community. And that's, that's where I feel very fortunate that I had this great team that did that and helped me. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and you exemplify humility. I mean, I get that from you as much as anybody, especially for a guy that, again, has accomplished what you've accomplished. Um, and perhaps some of this might make you feel a bit uncomfortable talking about the awards and the accolades. Um, but you also have the ability to inspire a lot of people, too. You know, when when Jim Tomey steps yeah. up and says, hey, we're going to step out here, we're going to help. Um, a lot of others will follow along with that, too. So um, is, is there a balance? I guess my question is, is there a balance between um, making it look like you're puffing yourself up and, hey, look what I did, and really being about inspiring other people to give? Well, it's, it's yes, it is about inspiring other people. And, you know, I'll give you an example is, you know, this past year, I, I, I watched the interview with Adam Wainwright winning the Roberto Clemente. And I, I, I am a big fan of Adam. I think Adam is, a, is an incredible man. He's got a great family, you know, and, and I think along the way, you look at, I'm touching on the Roberto Clemente Award because all of those guys that were blessed to get that honor uh, have inspired people. They've, they've, they've tried to lead and, but, but never take the credit, right? They never will sit there and say, oh, I did this or I did that. And that's, that's what I admire most about that group. And, and I know from my end, I just, again, and I touched on it. I'm just so grateful that I've had so many wonderful, great people around me helping me along the way. And, you know, and, and also pass the torch down and have conversations with young players in the game and, you know, inform, hey, if you want to do something special, if you're a young White Sox player and something's like true to your heart and, and you believe in it, you know, for, get with the organization and ask questions on things you can do. With social media today, Liner, the opportunity is out there for all of these guys to do great things and it's not about how much you raise, it's about the time and the effort and the joy that you get in your heart at the end of the day, giving back and making someone smile. And to know that you did that is the greatest feeling there is. And you know, look, you're a humble man as well. The things that you've done 
is I admire that. And that inspires me. It inspires all of us to kind of, we talk fraternity, but we also, we want to, we want to help each other and, and root for each other to give back. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, that was actually going to be my last question and you just answered it. Why do you give? But I, I love yeah. your answer right there. The joy that it brings, inspiring other people. Uh, and you're right. I mean, this is a fraternity. Um, you know, one guy stands up and says, let's do this. There's a whole uh, host of others that will join in uh, with him. So that's, that's cool to know that we have that kind of a, a pact. So, so there's a few that I do want to touch on. There's you know, Andrea and I, and this is my wife, has really loved the Therapeutic Writing Center of Cleveland that we've been a part of for a long time. That's really true and special to our heart. Uh, we were a part of the, uh, you know, the Children's Home and Aid there. Conurco and I, actually, we did the Bring Me Home campaign, which was run scored. And with him and I's speed, that was probably something... <laughs> You know, that was probably, they always joke, excuse me, they always okay. joke with us like, man, you guys don't steal bases, but <laughs> uh, that that organization, the foster care, uh, you know, and just the, the food banks of Cleveland and uh, locally there in Chicago, I know Andrea and I've had a, we've had a, 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 an awesome time being a part of that and giving back. So it's, you know, it, we're blessed, Liner. We really are. And we feel very fortunate that we've been able to, uh, you know, to give back and help and make people smile and bring a, bring happiness to their day. Amen. Well, there's a lot of people that, that look up to you, Jimmy, a lot of people that look up to other uh, ball players, and, uh, and it's good to see you and other guys using that platform to – to honor the game and to honor them and to inspire. And uh, I think this world could be a better place if we all thought about what we could do for someone else. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for that. I, I got to close here with kind of a funny question um, because as I was doing my research, yeah, uh, I saw a nickname that you had in high school uh, and I saw some swings too, that you took in high school and <laughs> I could immediately recognize, I mean, you, yeah. you proved your swing since, uh, since those days, but man, I could still see some of the same, uh, you know, technique and, and some sure. of the same, same nuances there, but, uh, you, you had a nickname, the limestone rocket. Can you tell us about that? Well, so my, my, actually that's my high school's name is the limestone rockets. So I was always out hitting early, you know? So if, if, well, we had a tee and we had a little net set up and uh, one of my teammates actually would come out. He would jump in and the whole running joke was, is, oh, let's try to hit rockets today or let's. And, you know, being that that was our high school, we just had fun with it. You know, if if you squared a ball up or hit a line drive through, you know, like center field or right field, the running joke with all of us was. Oh, we're the rockets, you know, hit a rocket. So it was, it was pretty cool. One thing, a couple of things I know about Jim Tomey, he, he's going to be uh, having fun wherever he goes and he's always going to be uh, doing things for others. Jimmy, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thanks Liner. It's great to see you and have an opportunity here to share a little time together and catch up. It, it made my night. I'm glad we finally connected. You know, I've been out here, in Arizona and spring training. And I'm, I'm so glad we finally got to connect and, you know, I love you. I love your family and, uh, you know, please stay safe during all this, uh, all the COVID time that we're going through with the pandemic and, you know, tell dad hello and your whole family and we miss you all. You bet, buddy. We'll do it. Thank you so much. Yes, sir.